Cast of DuPont Company brings you A Lady of Distinction, starring Ida Lupino on The Cavalcade of America. First, here is Gain Whitman. Good evening. Here's good news for gardeners. The DuPont Company has developed one product called DuPont Garden Dust to control both insects and plant diseases of flowers and vegetables. It contains four ingredients, including DDT, and is effective on flowers, vegetables, fruit trees, and ornamental shrubs. It can be used as a dust or mixed with water and used as a spray. If you can't get it at your local dealers, write us for information. DuPont Garden Dust is another of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Lady of Distinction, starring Ida Lupino as M. Carey Thomas on the Cavalcade of America. By the time I die, my brain shall weigh as much as any man's. I hereby take my solemn oath. June 4th, 1877, signed, Carey Thomas. Just about 70 years ago, a young girl of a Quaker family wrote those words in her diary. She was Carrie Thomas, who had gone to a lecture with her mother and heard with indignation the statement that a man's brain actually weighed a few ounces more than a woman's. She hurried home to enter a protest against this outrage in her diary. While she was still writing, her mother came in the room. Carrie? Oh, Mother, come in. He is writing again in thy diary. Oh, that awful lecturer. What if a man's brain does weigh a few ounces more than a woman's? It's because for thousands of years, men have kept women from having an education. Be not so fierce in thy oh, argument. there are so many other things thy we child. can do. Thy is possessed of a demon. Of what good is thy Quaker upbringing if... Oh, mother, I'd die if I could do anything to prove I was equal to a man. I think thee has got a little up into the airy mind of late. Well, I'm not a child anymore, mother. I know. And when thy friends all went to a ladies finishing school, they did have thy way and go to college. But now, they must think of the future and marriage. Marriage? Thee is fond of thy cousin Frank. Frank, yes, but... But, Mother, so often marriage is just a pulling down of women. Thee has learned this from thy father and me. Oh, truly, Mother... What do you have out of marriage? I have thy father. How many children? If it is not marriage thee wishes, Carrie, what does thee see ahead? College. Thee has just received thy degree from Cornell. I want another degree, Mother. I want to go to Johns Hopkins. Johns Hopkins? But that is a man's college. Well, there's no law against women. Nature's law. I defy it. My child, even if it were possible, does thee think it would be the easiest thing in the world for thee to study for higher learning among men? But I don't want the easiest things in the world. I want the best. September 19th, 1877. Oh, today is my first day at Johns Hopkins. I'm so excited. Gentlemen, gentlemen, if you please, a little order. <coughs> I'm sure that this class will be... Yes? What can I do for you? Excuse me, sir, but my name is Carrie Thomas. Indeed. Who requested that startling information? <laughs> I, I'm a new student. I received permission to attend your lectures. Oh, yes, I remember. Yes, uh, quite a signal honor for me, I'm sure. <laughs> You may take your seat, Miss Thomas. Yes, sir. Not there, Miss Thomas. Farther back. Yes, sir. Keep going to the last row. And the gentlemen in the class will face this way. Is, is this where you want me to sit, sir? Since you are the only woman ever to attend this class, I shall have to see that you do not disturb it. Go to your right, Miss Thomas. To my right. But I can't. There's a curtain here. You will sit behind the curtain, please. Behind? 
But I won't be able to see you. Nor will we be able to see you. May 9th, 1878. I was told today that my privilege of attending classes at Johns Hopkins did not mean I would receive a degree. Why are women denied all opportunity? Why do we have to fight for what men get as a matter of course? I talked this over today with my cousin, Frank. Does the degree matter so much, Carrie? Oh, yes, it does, Frank. Yes, of course it does. Well... Go after it, then. But there's no place in America where I can then get... Then get it in Europe. Father's refused. You know that. Yes. Have you talked with your mother about it? Mother's on my side, but what can she do against father? She's a successful wife. I'd say she could do anything she wanted. But it seems so hopeless. I don't think it is, Carrie. Try it. Talk to your mother again. Do you, do you think it'll do any good? That there's some hope? I only wish there was as much for me. For you? You know what I mean, Carrie. Oh... Carrie, do you love me? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Then, then don't you want a home, children? Of, of course. Well, Carrie... Frank, I... I want you to listen to me for a moment and understand. I'll try. There's so much to accomplish in the world. You spoke of children. Well, there are other children of the mind and spirit. Good deeds that live after us. It's only through children that the human race can go on, Carrie. But I want it to. Only I want it to be better. All right, I'll not argue. I know better. But will you answer one question? Yes. If you go to Europe and get your degree, if you go and return, may I ask you again? Oh, yes. I want you to ask me again. And the answer? I think you know, Frank. Mother... Mother, is there any way to make Father see how much I want to go? It was against his wishes that thee went to Johns Hopkins, but because he was thy father and loved thee, he found it in his heart to let thee go. Then why? Why can't he let me go to Europe, too? Because thee is a woman, darling, and this is not a woman's world. Well, I'll make it one. Oh, Mother, please talk to Father. Thee would not be happy unless thee went. It's what I want now, more than anything else in the world. Yes, I see that. Carrie. What, Mother? I will help thee, but not with words. They are not our weapons. But there are others. Others? I don't understand. Perhaps thee can cry thy way to Europe. Cry? And I will cry with thee. Oh, but mother, that's so old-fashioned. I, I couldn't... My that... child, thee must put aside thy belief in women's strength and put thy faith in what a man calls a woman's weakness. Thee must find tears or give up thy hope. And I was also talking to Mr. Green this morning. He has come back from Europe and... No, no, Ken, my son. What is the matter with thee? Both of thee. What did I say to bring these tears? Please, one of thee, tell me what did I say? Katie? Yes, Father? Thee has not spoken of uh, Europe for two days. I am glad to see that... Oh, what did I say? Mary, Mary, speak to our daughter. I... Not both of thee again? Father. Good evening, my dear. Uh, yes, dear? I... I... Uh, for these past two weeks, I have been afraid to speak in this house. Each time I do, the both have begun to weep. I am beginning to feel as though I am the cause of all the grief in the world. Carrie, this thing about uh, Europe... Oh, Father, please, please don't speak about it. Oh, Carrie... My dear sir. No, no, both of thee. Both of thee. They did not let me finish, Carrie. 
If nothing else will satisfy me, they may go to Europe. Oh, oh, Father. Father. They are a good man. Thee has not been easy to live with, Harry. Yet I shall be sorry to see thee go. Oh, now stop it. I have said nothing to make thee weep. Harry, stop crying. But I can't, Father. I'm too happy. November 25th, 1882. It doesn't seem possible that I've been studying at Leipzig and Zurich for two years. And this is the big day at last. I've had my written examination, finished my thesis, and today is the final oral examination of three hours. I appear before the faculty in evening clothes. My friend Anna is coming to help me dress. I shall wear my brown velvet and brocade with a long train and a pair of brown seal gloves to match. Oh, Carrie, you look beautiful. Anna, do, do I look as if I'm choking? Oh, don't be nervous. Oh, I'm not nervous, Anna. It's just every time I, I open my mouth, I start to scream. Oh. oh, and when I think of getting up there in front of the decan and all those... The decan? That's, that's the title they give the head of the universities over here. He's the most important man of all, and he'll be on the examining board. Oh, but I'm sure you'll pass the exam. Yes, I've got to pass with honors. I want a magna cum laude. Oh, Carrie, they hardly ever give that. Not even to a man. That's why I want it. Anna, will you hand me those flowers? You know, you look as if you could be presented to the queen, Carrie. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Most girls our age are dressing for bows or to go to dances, and I'm dressing to give a dissertation on Anglo-Saxon philology. Carrie, are you sorry you didn't stay in America and marry Frank? <sighs> no. Besides, I, I may marry him when I get home. I may. Well, I'm ready. Kiss me for luck. Darling. Oh, Anna, I I'm not worried about the exam. It's just that awful waiting while they decide. Miss Thomas, will you kindly re-enter the examination room? Yes, to come. Gentlemen, rise. Miss Thomas, the faculty has debated. I may tell you we are amazed at your clear and critical understanding. Never did we suppose a woman could show such philological talent. Thank you, Dick. Uh, 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 Kerry Thomas, I have the pleasure of welcoming you as a doctor of philosophy of the University of Zurich and of informing you that the faculty has bestowed upon you the highest honor in its power to give. Summa cum laude. Summa cum laude? Yes. We hope, we hope you will become in the future one of our great men of learning. <laughs> I passed. Summa cum laude. The first time they ever gave a woman... Anna. Anna, what is it? This cable came for you, Carrie. My mother? No, no. Not your mother. Tell me. Your cousin. Frank? He died of typhoid fever. Oh, no. Carrie. Oh, Carrie, I'm so sorry. What can I do? Nobody can do anything. You loved him very much. And always. Anna, will you help me pack? Pack? But what for? I'm going home. Back to America. Now, Father, I'm not asking for your help. 
All I ask is that you don't try to talk the board of trustees out of giving me the job. You're on the board of Bryn Mawr. One Kitty. They have come back from Europe. There, they received the degree they wanted so badly. Are they not satisfied? Yes, Father. Then why ask for more? I... Father, I promised Frank that when I returned with what I wanted, they could... Well, he could ask me to marry him. Now he can't. But I'm still here, Father. And I want to work. I must. Yes, I see. And they think they are qualified to teach at Bryn Mawr? In what department, Carrie? Not to teach, Father. I want to be president of the college. Sit down, Miss Thomas. Thank you, Dr. Rhodes. The board of trustees has considered your application for the presidency of Bryn Mawr College. Yes. Uh, They do not think it wise. Oh. I'm sorry my application has been rejected. I think I would have made the college more of a success than anyone else they're likely to appoint. (laughs) They have appointed me. Oh, I I beg your pardon. Uh, Not at all. Miss Thomas, I want your help. I'll need your help at Bryn Mawr. You, You want me here? Yes, to teach, plan, and create. I... I... Well, all right. But under certain circumstances... Such as? A woman's college, to command respect, must maintain the same high standards and have the same entrance requirements as a man. Very well, Miss Thomas. With your help, our college will be different. Our college? Yes. Miss Thomas, will you be the first American dean? Dr. Rhodes... It's a big job, Miss Thomas. Dr. Rhodes, I've been looking for a big job all my life. You are listening to A Lady of Distinction, starring Ida Lupino as Carrie Thomas on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Carrie Thomas accepts the position as dean of Bryn Mawr College, thus becoming one of the first American women to hold such a high academic position. But she doesn't stop there. Ten years later, she becomes president. Night and day, she works to realize her dream of making Bryn Mawr the finest college she can. Now, it is November 6th, 1905, and Carrie Thomas writes in her diary... The new library will be finished soon, and it will be the most beautiful in the country. But things were a little more expensive than we planned. We still need $150,000. Our friends have been more than generous, and Mr. Rockefeller has already given us half a fortune. Perhaps he will listen to me again. He's difficult to see. However, I think I know how I can arrange it. Uh, Stop! Stop, wait a minute, please. Oh, what is it? Uh, well, I, uh, I... Oh, Mr. Rockefeller. Miss Thomas. What are you doing here? Uh, what's the tree doing here, you might ask? I had a little accident with it. It was in the way of my car. Well, they usually grow on the side of the road. <laughs> it's a good thing I happen to be passing. Yes. Uh, could you give me a lift to town in your car? I must get to the bank. Get in. Uh, thank you. I'm going there myself. <laughs> I suppose I can leave my car where it is. Well, I doubt you could move it. We'll send someone from the garage. Uh, tell me, Miss Thomas, who taught you to drive? Oh, what is there to teach? Oh, if you're thinking of the tree, that was just an accident. A happy accident, in fact. Uh, really? Yes, I wanted to see you about something anyway. Oh? About what? $150,000. Well, that's a neat sum. It's an accurate one. I need it to complete the library. Miss Thomas, didn't I make some kind of a uh, previous gift to complete the library? I know. I underestimated and now perhaps you are overestimating. Uh, me, that is. Uh, Mr. Rockefeller, I'm really in great difficulty. You have the money. We have the things to give. We can't give the things unless we have the money. You make it all so simple. No, I've been extravagant, I know. But I feel always that our women should have the best. 
so that they can learn to recognize it, demand it, and fight for it in the future. And how did you arrive at $150,000? I'll show you. I have it all here on paper. Uh, uh Uh-oh. I should have known. Uh, Go ahead, read it. Uh, And wreck my car, too? I'll read it to you. No, 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 no. I take your word. You mean you'll help? No, ma'am. Of course, it is asking a great deal. I'm very sorry. I'd like to, Miss Thomas, but there are limits. I have a blank check. So have I. And I intend to keep it that way. (laughs) Uh, do you have your own pen, mine leaf? I'll buy you a new one for Christmas. Not a pen, please. I want a library for Christmas. And uh, I'll buy you a book. I have a book. Well, here's the bank. Uh, very well, Mr. Rockefeller. Thank you for the list. As for the money, I'll probably be around again. Uh, don't bother. I'll send you a check in tonight's mail. What? Oh, oh thank you, Mr. Goodbye, Rockefeller. Goodbye, Miss Thomas. But aren't you going to the bank, too? No. I'm going to the doctor to have my head examined. (laughs) The library is finished. Everyone admires the teakwood stairway. It must be done. It must. But, uh, Miss Thomas... Electricity is a luxury we cannot afford. We couldn't afford to lose Denby Hall, but we did. Because a student knocked over an oil lamp. An accident. Which wouldn't have happened with electricity. We shall have electricity at Bryn Mawr. Miss Thomas, there's a letter on your desk. Yes, I, I've seen it. Thank you. Is there anything wrong? I shall be gone for a few days. My, my mother has sent for me. She's very ill. I'm back at Bryn Mawr. It doesn't seem possible that Mother is gone. She died of cancer. A disease that could be wiped out. We would use all the weapons at our command. And today I learned that Johns Hopkins Medical School is closing for lack of funds. But it was not closed. For it is schools like Johns Hopkins that teach us how to fight against disease, that furnishes the weapons with which to fight. They need half a million dollars. Very well. I shall raise that money. She's done it. Carrie Thomas has done it. A half million dollars for the school. Yes, but the terms of the endowment state were to admit women. Mm, And not behind curtains. November 1st, 1935. Tomorrow was Bryn Mawr's golden jubilee. My college is 50 years old. And I'm almost 79. And asked to make a speech. And I shall. Even against the orders of my doctor, who says I mustn't. (laughs) No doctor in the world who can keep me away from the Jubilee tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the woman whose distinguished achievements and heroic stature have made her for 38 years the guiding light of Bryn Mawr College, the President Emeritus M. Carey Cobb. today, I shall be three score and 19 years old. I believe that there is no more lasting satisfaction and no greater happiness in life than caring for and, if possible, working for something that seems to us worthwhile. If it is possible to build on earth a heavenly house not made with hands, it is in the creation and perfecting of a college such as this. In giving women the opportunity so long denied them, we are in a peculiar but very real sense continuing our own existence beyond our own lives. 
there is an immortality of remembrance. Here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. In most foreign countries, it is usual practice to buy the day's food at the marketplace, take it home, and cook it immediately. In part, this is custom. But there is another reason for it. Few people outside of the United States can afford refrigerators. An American woman would at once ask, how in the world do they keep the butter cool in summer and the milk for the children? The answer is, unless they have a cool cellar or a spring house, they don't. We Americans have many things to be thankful for, and one of them, as the good old summertime rolls round again, is certainly refrigeration. No woman would deny that her life is made easier, and the life of her family healthier, by the faithful refrigerator in the kitchen that keeps food fresh and cool on the hottest day of summer. Of equal importance is comfort cooling, as refrigeration engineers call it. What a blessed relief on a blazing day to step off the sidewalk into the cool comfort of an air-conditioned movie theater. What a pleasure to enter a store whose management is thoughtful enough to soothe jangled shopping nerves with cool, dehumidified air. These days, and all of us are grateful for it, more and more theaters, hotels, department stores, restaurants, and drugstores are installing cooling systems. The mechanical refrigerators that serve us so efficiently at home, the cooling systems in public buildings, which do so much for our comfort, both depend in large part upon a discovery of chemical science. Freon refrigerants, manufactured by Kinetic Chemicals Incorporated, an affiliate of General Motors and the DuPont Company. Circulating through coils or pipes, changing from a liquid to a gas and back to a liquid again, Freon refrigerants have the power of cooling the air around them. This summer, when you drink a glass of cool, delicious milk or spread a piece of bread with cool, firm butter, the chances are that it will come from a refrigerator cooled by a Freon safe refrigerant. Virtually all modern comfort cooling depends upon Freon. Frozen food units, too, make use of these Freon refrigerants, which so well deserve to be called better things for better living through chemistry. She worked alone, fighting fatigue, criticism, opposition. She worked to wipe out an insidious disease that struck without warning. And she won, but only after she herself contracted the sickness she struggled to banish. Be sure to listen next Monday night to Woman Alone, the story of Alice Evans, starring Jane Wyman on The Cavalcade of America. The music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Tonight's Cavalcade was written by Doris Frankel. Ida Lupino may soon be seen in the Warner Brothers picture, Escape Me Never. In the cast with Miss Lupino were Jeanette Nolan as the mother, Norman Field as the father, Peg Lecentra as Anna, and Howard McNear as Mr. Rockefeller. Others included David Ellis, Jack Crucian, Stanley Farrar, Junius Matthews, and Edith Tackner. This is John Heaston inviting you to listen next week to Woman Alone, starring Jane Wyman on The Cavalcade of America... Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. The Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.